Helium 10, those of you that are new, uh, you probably don't know what it is. In week three, we talk about it. If you haven't downloaded it, be sure that you do. We get, uh, well, you get 50% off your first month uh, using our link and our, um, our code or whatever. And then you get, um, you get 10% off moving forward, but you just have to email them because they are set up as you either get either or. But they told me, hey, just have your guys email us after you know month month one and then we will apply the 10 percent. so make sure that you guys do that okay um this is kind of the main portal so it's uh you come here come here product research you go to black box so this is the main portal this is where you should be starting right so this is simply um a place where you give um give me one second let me turn on the ac oh, it's gonna get hot one more minute. All right, sorry about that. Okay. So um, this is where you're going to start. And by the way, if you guys have any questions, um, as I'm talking, just interrupt me and unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, let's see here. Okay, so this is the main portal where you're gonna tell Amazon, these are, these are the parameters that I'm looking for, and this is what I need you to get, to get me, right? So what I teach in the program is that we're gonna find products that can make us at least $3,000 a month in net profit. Now, if you think about this, let's say 2,500 just for ease, ease of numbers. Let's say we're running our store at a 25% net profit. So that means we have to make $10,000 a month in revenue for us to profit about $2,500. That's if you're going for profit. If you don't care about profit and you're just you're looking for revenue because you wanna stack up, maybe your, your, uh, your plan is to exit, right? Maybe, you know, like I know last year, or not last year, two years ago, uh, we got hired by this company and they said that they wanted an account that makes $250,000 a month in revenue. So that was our goal. They didn't care about profit. So we were just looking to grow revenue. Our profit was like 8%, right? So anyways, it depends on what your goal is. And that's what you want to do is you want to have a goal in mind before you go and start doing product research, right? Um, so for me, just for ease of numbers, ease of everything, for the sake of this video, I'm going to say, well, you know what? <clears throat> I want to make $2,500 a, uh, a month per product. Let's say right now I've got a job and it pays me 60 k a year. So that's $5,000 a month, right? I think so. Um, so that's $5,000 a month. You know, and I've got $10,000 that I can invest in this. So I did my numbers. Okay, $10,000 can get me two good products that I'm confident about and I'm a goal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find me two products that make me $2,500 a month because my goal is by the end of 2021, I wanna quit my job. That's my goal, okay? So I've got 10 months, 11 months to make this dream come true with $10,000 in my pocket, very doable, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start looking for products that make $10,000 revenue, okay? So that's what I'm gonna look for. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look at the revenue calculator here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna put $10,000 as my minimum, I'm gonna put 8,000 because I'm okay. Even if it only makes me $2,000, that's fine, I'll launch three, okay? So I'm gonna say $8,000 is my minimum, my bare minimum, I don't want it to go less than that because anything less than that is just not gonna be worth it. I'm not gonna change anything else. The only thing else that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the reviews. Because I want a product that makes me at least 8,000, but then I also want a product that doesn't have more than 200 reviews because I don't want it to be competitive, right? I want my barrier to entry to be decently fit, you know? And then I'm not going to worry about this. The only thing I'm going to worry about is my categories. What categories am I going to look at? I'm going to go to the Holy Grail video and then Bashar says that I need to focus on those 10 categories. Okay, so let's go select those 10 categories. So those 10 categories are baby beauty, uh, health and household, home and kitchen, industrial, kitchen and dining, office, pet supplies, sports, 
Boys and games. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, there you go. So that's ten. And then I'm gonna say search. Okay. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just keep scrolling through. You know, I don't want to sell anything that has FDA. Too many, you know, all this other stuff, and it's just too much work for me. Uh, wrap around cable label. What's that? Okay, this sounds interesting. Uh, let me take this out of here. Okay. Mr. Label self laminating. So self laminating wrap around cable labels. Hmm. So now I'm thinking about a keyword, right? Because that's what you need to do. So now you got the product. Then I'm like, okay, if I was a customer, how would I search this product? What would I type on Amazon? You want the broadest keyword possible, okay? Um, so, look at my wife always buying stuff on Amazon. Um, so label self, okay, so Mr. Label is probably their brand, right, Mr. Leo? Okay, so self laminating wrap. Let's start here. So this is the, the, the least amount of words to find a product, right? So you want to start with the broadest keyword possible. So self laminating wrap. Okay. Self laminating wrap. Is this what I'm looking for? Final unconscious permanent adhesive. This is it. I don't know. Yeah, so that product showed up. Okay, so maybe this is it. Okay, cool. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my x-ray. Once again, if you're new, this probably makes no sense. Talk about it in week three. So don't stress, don't worry, just stick around. Any questions, by the way? Any questions, please? No, just unmute yourself and talk. Um, Ahmed, this isn't a question, but an observation, an item I was really into was selling on Amazon for an average of 25 to 35. Uh, but when I went to eBay just to check around, was blown away. It's being sold for some 12 to 18. Do you think this could be a threat? Not a threat. People don't like eBay. People like Amazon. Okay, so um, like when you go to search something, you don't go to eBay. I, I, I don't think I've ever bought anything on eBay. Um, you go to Amazon. So that's why Amazon can sell more because that's where the eyeballs are. Okay, so here's my observation of this product. First of all, NA. So that means, well, actually, maybe I need to take out the dash. Maybe that's what it is. Let's see how that looks. So same product is just a keyword, right? So we need to make sure we know that Bashar says in week three that we need to have a, a keyword with a minimum uh, search volume per month of 5,000 up to 20,000, okay? Now, if you find a keyword with 4,000 monthly searches, great. Got a keyword with 21,000 monthly searches, awesome. So self-laminating wrap is not NA. That means it's non-existent, doesn't have much volume. I almost can't believe that, but you know, we removed the SP to sponsor because these guys are paying to be here. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's much demand here, right? There doesn't look like there's much anything going on here. You know, there's not much sales. There's, I mean, there's this guy, like 25,000, but that's bizarre. Huh. That's interesting. Because see, this guy is doing 25,000 and then like a whole bunch of nothing. That's a weird niche. See, like this would not be a niche I would get into because first of all, there's no consistency of numbers, which is one of the commandments. Sales are just all over the place. I bet your reviews are also all over the place. Yeah, so like you've got 399. So I think it's probably the wrong keyword. That's what's happening. Because otherwise, these numbers would be a little bit more even, right? You wouldn't have 25,400, right? And it's, what is it? Oh, 1,700. So I think it's the wrong keyword. Self laminating wrap, okay? Body wrap. I pulled something in the back yesterday. Oh my God, it's terrible. Um, Self laminating wrap for my panels. Do we have an electrician here? 
maybe they can tell us or someone that understands about this stuff. I don't know, my, are these all the same product? Okay, maybe we should forget about this product. All right, go to the second product. Okay, what is that? Capacity energy star humidifier. No, too much, 249, too expensive. Uh, Master series deer decoy, too much. 59, what is that? Blue footbed healed wide width. What? What's that? Huh. That's interesting. A footbed. Oh, I thought it was a bed. I'm like, what is that? Okay, a footbed. Okay. It's like Dr. Scholl's type of stuff. Okay. All right, natural brain booster and all that kind of stuff. Who wants like everyday stuff, you know what I mean? Like things that don't have any FDA approvals and bottle wall mounted wine rack. So wine racks, I don't know. I think we've looked at a wine rack before. Um, they have different models and different things. It could be a, a, a good product, I guess. So let's search it. Okay, so... Um, what is it? What's the keyword here? Okay, so bottle wall mounted wine rack. So just wine rack, but that would be, see like wine rack, I, can, I feel like it would be two wine rack. I feel like it would be too, too broad. You know, I've got a question here. To, to get keywords or a product, don't you wanna use Cerebro? Just pop the ASIN and sort the keyword searches. You can, but once you find a niche that you like, and we'll get to that here shortly. Once we find a niche that we like. So the only time I'll do that, Ahmed, is if I find a niche that I like, but the keyword that I'm finding sucks, right? Like it has low volume. Like the product earlier, if the niche looked good, but the keyword had low volume, then I'll go to Cerebro or I'll go to, um, not Cerebro, what's the other one? Magnet. And then I will see what other keywords are there that have um, more volume. Jane, hello, you have a question? If you do, just unmute yourself. Okay, I'm trying to get in, no. Okay. Um, all right, so let's run our x-ray. Whoa, yeah, see? 184,000, a lot. See, like, this is what I mean by consistency. These CDs, like 10,000, 6,000, 44, 22, 18, 20, 11, 22, 11, 10, 19. And then they go down as you go down the list, right? Maybe not. Well, this is sponsored. So you need to remove the sponsor and then they'll be even. Like, this is consistent. I love consistency like this. Everything is like, you know, earlier it was like 21,500, 10,000, 200. I don't like that, right? Sales, very consistent. You know, price, very consistent. You don't have someone selling it for five bucks and someone for 10, you know, $35, right? Consistent all around the same thing, okay? I bet you if we go to reviews, although some of them have like, well, actually here, let's remove the, you always want to remove the sponsor because these guys are paying to be there. And there's nothing wrong with that because we will do the same, but you should not be including them in your search because they're gonna throw you off. So it's a competitive niche, but as you can see decently, you know, decently, um, decently, what's the word? Consistent, right? But also it looks like there is some type of a room for you, for a new seller to go in. So then what we're looking at is making sure that seven of the top 10 have you know, match our criteria. And our criteria says that we need to have less than 200 reviews. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, right? Because what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, well, maybe we don't include this, but I say we do, right? So four out of 10 have match our criteria, but our criteria says at least seven. So you know that it's a competitive niche, but there is room to make good money, you know, because my goal was to make 8,000 and this is double. Right? So this is how you think about it. Okay. Just because you find a niche that's competitive doesn't mean you're going to cross it out. You just have to think and say, is it worth it? Do I have the money to do it? 
or do I find a product that is that has lo lower barrier to entry than this? Okay. If it's your first product, I would say probably find a product that, that has lower barrier to entry, meaning it's less competitive, just simply because it's your first product, right? You want to you want it to be a little easier, but if you're maybe someone's life's challenge, maybe this will be a good niche for you to go into. However, I wouldn't go into a competitive niche unless I know for certain, 100% that I can differentiate myself from everyone else. You don't want to go and sell another wooden rack or another rack that looks like this or whatever. Unless if you like have this like very cool idea about like, this is cool, that's pretty awesome. It looks like something I would buy, right? Uh, you know, like I'm not that crazy about racks, uh, about wine racks or, or wine, so I wouldn't buy something like this. That's just too many, you know, too many wines. Like something like this would be cool like that. See, that's pretty awesome. You know, something like this, that's cool, this is cool, you know? So unless you have this like crazy idea, this awesome idea for wine racks, I would say don't go into it. But if you do, it would be a good niche, which is cool. This is nice. If you like this is too much for me, because I don't do much wine or... Actually, this is nice, like a little, like a mini bar, but too expensive. Like to launch a product like this, I mean, just do the math. Let's say even if you order only, so 320 times 0.25, let's say you're gonna get it for 25% cost. So that's $32, let's say $30. You buy 200 units, you know, that's $6,000, okay? But if you buy 300 units, that's 9,000. So, you know, you do that twice, that's 18, you know, 15 to $20,000. So expensive, expensive launch, right? This is cool, that's cool. Okay, so now here is the basic um, of the fundamentals of product research, okay? Now from here, you're like, you know what? But I want to niche down. Wine rack, I think is too broad. So there's a category, there's a niche, there's a sub niche. Category is, what is it? Kitchen and dining, okay? So this is the category. Niche is wine rack, then there's a sub niche. What a sub niche is, is like, rustic wine rack or countertop wine rack or standalone wine rack or I love you wine rack or something, you know, I don't know, whatever, mm -hmm. right? Um, so let's do, uh, like if I were to buy a wine rack, it would probably be a countertop. Countertop wine rack. So that's what I'm looking for. Like I thought of it, I, I discussed it with my wife and I said, babe, you know, I don't want to have a wine rack. But she said, you know, there's too much room. I don't want to take too much room. We don't drink wine. Okay, well, you know what? Let's get a little countertop wine rack. And I went and I searched wine racks and then I saw all these other stuff that you know, are not relatable to me. And I'm like, you know what? Countertop wine rack. So now what I did is I niched down from the niche of wine rack. I niched down. So now I'm only going to see countertop. You're, and, but then you're gonna be like, but how, how is that even possible? Well, because these guys should have countertop in their keyword or in their listing somewhere. So Amazon should only see countertop, 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 you know? Okay, so now we'll run the numbers and see if this niche or sub niche is less competitive and that the barrier to entry is less, okay? So you see, product research doesn't need to be complicated or difficult or annoying, although it's time consuming, but it's cool because it brings out the cre creative mind in you. See, 3,000 monthly searches where we were at 188,000, ah, my God, 188,000 monthly searches, right? So um, much less, which makes me feel more comfortable, although it's less than 5,000, but it's good. 3,000 is great, okay? As long as the numbers look good. You can see that the numbers are lower. However, they're right about what you wanted, 8,000-ish, right? So if we skip over, okay, so do you see these numbers? Five, six, eight, 10, you know? So there's a possibility they could do as high as 22,000, 11,000, 5,000, 2,282. So this might be a better way to go into it. Wow, shit, this is actually a good, wow, guys. <laughs> I think we actually found a good product. Wow, I've never actually looked into this. This is a perfect product. Those of you that are watching this should consider this product. I hope that not how many are here. There's 19, including me, so that's 18, including Cody, so 17, OK? 
Okay. I hope not all 17 of you guys launch it, but wow, this is a good product. Oops, what did I do? You know, I never, never thought of this like that. It's funny because I've had people um, send us wine racks for, for months now and I've never searched it to come. But do you see what just happened right now? And this was literally product number what that we looked at. Like I, I hear it all the time. People say, Bashar, I've been researching for days and I can't find anything, I'm like, how? Literally every time I do this, I find a product within the top five. Last time I did this, I found product in the second. So that's one, two, was potential. So one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh product. And it's a great product. I haven't seen numbers like that in some time. So 3,000. So now to go back to what Ahmed was talking about earlier, you could literally take this, you could literally take this, okay? You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this video and then I'm gonna add it to the, to the course, I think. I'm gonna cut the video where we were talking about product research. So to go, to go back to um, Ahmed's, uh, uh, um, Ahmed, what were we talking about? Oh, keyword. So he was saying, you know, but then you can find better keywords. So now you have, you know, you have a keyword. So the way that, I, what I'm gonna do, actually, let me, cause I think I'm gonna add this video to the course because this was good. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull up. And this is why you guys should be joining these weekly webinars every single time because they are insanely valuable. Okay, so we're gonna go to our 15 commandments. We are recording this video, right? Okay, good. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna pull up our 15 commandments, right? And we're gonna say, okay, so now, and I'll be 100% honest with you guys, at this point, the 15 commandments really don't, don't matter, okay? Because the way I'm thinking, okay, if you say 100 to 150, I need to change that, you know? Around 100 to 200, okay? Um, you know, but then see like number of sales, I'm not even looking at this. Selling price, okay, 1835, cool, depending on target, okay? But see, what I'm looking at here is, is my, um, is my revenue, okay? So I'm really looking at the revenue here. But if you're, if you wanna look at the sales and you say, okay, 300 monthly, uh, 300 sales per month, that's one, that's two, three, I'm not gonna disregard that. Okay, four, I'm not gonna disregard that. Five, six, seven, right? Seven out of top 10, okay? Selling price is great. And then from there, the reviews. So the reviews, I want seven of the top 10 to be below 200. So that's one, that's two, that's three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, so seven out of ten. Perfect. Awesome product. 3,000 monthly searches, great. But if you're like, well, I want to find more keywords that are around the 5,000 range or I want my top keyword to be higher, you could, here's what you could do, which I'm going to explain in a second, but because this is your main keyword, because you are selling countertop wine racks, Okay, this is what your, what about, you know, what about plural? Mm, yeah, maybe two. Okay. All right. So then what you can do is I would say this should be your main keyword simply because um, it's, it's, the, it's what you're selling, right? So see like that's too long of a tail of a keyword countertop racks for wine bottles, but it might work actually. You'd be surprised. Okay. 
what I see is where they're going here. Come on. Yeah, sorry it takes a minute because I'm on Zoom and all that. Eh, yeah. Okay, so that's going to be your main keyword, right? Now, if you want to generate more keywords, then you can go to Helium 10 again and go to their other, go to keyword search and you go to magnet. And then what you're going to do and you're going to put and so what this does is this takes the main keyword and then spits out other keywords that are relevant to that keyword, okay? And then you can um, filter them by monthly search volume and all that stuff. And this might give you other insight or other uh, inspiration for other keywords, maybe that are even more relevant to what you're selling and that have higher monthly search volume. But this is the excellent and the best um, example of what a what a product for a beginner should look like okay easy um barrier to entry your your launch budget is not going to be much it's a 30 dollar 25 to 30 dollar um uh price point that means you're probably going to source it for less than ten dollars for sure and you should um you should be able to sell it for $24.99 easy all day. You could definitely make minimum two to three grand a month in net profit doing this. And you should do revenue about five to $8,000 easy selling this product. So this is literally the perfect product for a beginner and what like the low barrier to entry looks like. Once again, reviews are low, um, search volume is good. Selling price, I love. It's on point. Sales are good. Revenue is good. Perfect. I like it. Literally, could not be any any better. But once again, um, this will be in the program. I am adding this video to the program. I'll probably call it "Look Over My Shoulder Product Research Unedited" or something like that. I don't know. Uh, so probably a lot more people. If you're watching this in the program, if you're here live with us. You might have a good chance at launching this product, but there are about 18 of you guys here. But then if you're watching this on replay in the program, don't freaking do it because I mean, we're gonna probably have at least half a dozen people in this course that have launched it. So, but perfect product. I'll try to do more of these so that way you guys could kind of look at what I did. Any questions? No? Bernard, what's up, buddy? You just popped in. Hershey says the product seems to be large. So give me one second, Bernard. Let me just address this question real quick. So yes okay. and no. Um, you know, not very much. It depends on exactly what you sell. Uh, but it could be a little, you know, actually here. Let's, uh, let me share the screen again. And then let's keep going and add this product or actually go to... So then to address Hershey's um, point, let's go to, what is it? FBA calculator. Okay. So let's say we're looking and then we decided that we're gonna sell something like, I don't know, something like this. I like that. Okay. So, so we're gonna sell something like that, but obviously moving from here is that you're going to, Cody, are you still here? Is Cody still here? Look at this, look at that keyword. Look at that keyword, Cody. Might be an addition, buddy. All right, so um, we're gonna take the ASIN and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to, okay, so FBA calculator. Okay, and then we're gonna put the ASIN here. And then we're gonna say that we're going to, okay, so Amazon fulfillment. So item price, we're gonna sell it for $24.99, right? That's what they're going for, I think. We're just going for $24.99, okay. Um, cost of fulfillment. So let's say we're gonna get it to ship to Amazon. 
What's 25% of that? So 25 times 0.25, that's six dollars and 25 cents. Let's just say 650. So we'll see the product's gonna cost us 650. So we're gonna profit 699, decently healthy profit. So Amazon is gonna take seven dollars and 32 cents. Uh, storage fees are gonna be 43 cents. Uh, we're gonna can we're gonna fit you know we're gonna have 13.49 out of 24.99. Um, our cost of the product is 650. We should profit six dollars and 99 cents, which is 27.97. Healthy, healthy, healthy profit. Okay, let's do some simple math here and say uh, what's the average sale of this product. I think you should be able to sell at least 250 units a month. <clears throat> If not more, come on. If you guys have any questions about what I'm doing here before I go to the next topic, please let me know because I want to answer all of your questions that way I can include it in this video because I am gonna cut this uh, segment and put it in the course. So I wanna make sure that I address any questions that maybe I'm not thinking about. So if you guys see any questions, uh, especially like people like Hershey, because I know you're a little more experienced than most that are here. Uh, Cody, if you have any questions, let me know so I can address those right now. Um, uh, 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 uh. So, yeah, you should be able to sell at least 250 units a month, no problem here, if you rank among the top five, top 10 even. Um, so if you, what did we say the profit was? So 699, let's just say $7 for ease of numbers, seven times 250, so that's 1750 per month in that profit. Okay, your first product on Amazon, um, I think that's a total success, okay? We're going by average. Now, should you be able to sell 300 units per month? Uh, seven times 300, well, that went up to 2,100. What if you become one of the top three sellers and then you're selling, what's the top guy selling? Top guy selling 1,300 units. Let's say you're selling more like, let's just call it 500, right? And you completely crush it and then you sell 500 times seven. Well, now you're at 3,500 <clears throat> for your first product. Um, we said your launch is gonna cost how much? Uh, 625, we said was your cost times 300. So your, your product launch only 1875. You've got $10,000. Remember the scenario that we talked about earlier? You have $10,000, you want to replace your job, which is $5,000 a month. So you've got technically $5,000 dedicated to each product, <clears throat> okay? You order 300 units, let's say you ordered 500 units, that's 3,100. You can still launch three products like this one, okay? And even if you're only at 250 per month times seven, you're only at 1750, multiply that times three, that's $5,200. So you launch three products like this one and you saw it. it, took me what, 10 minutes to find this product? I mean, we've been only on this webinar for how long now? I don't know. Can't find it. I think it's been like an hour, maybe not even an hour and 10 minutes. Um, so it took me 10, 15 minutes to find this product. Let's say the first three months, the first five months, you launch three products like this. You can easily replace your job within the first year doing this exactly. Okay. Now you're like, but a my, I don't have a job and my business already makes $10,000 a month. I'm not interested in doing this. Okay, great. So then do the same thing as I did right now, but find products where you can sell 500,000 units per month and that can maybe profit you at $10 to $15 uh, net profit, which is our criteria. We're not interested in products like this one because we have more to play with, we have more experience, we have a bigger team, we have all that, right? We're not trying to quit a job 
we're trying to expand a business that already does, you know, seven figures. So what we do is we simply look for products that sell for more. So like right now, our criteria is don't sell a product that doesn't sell for at least $35, $40. You know, we want to make, you know, most of our products, we profit 15 to $20 a pop, right? So if you take a product where you sell, let's say 300 units a month and you profit $15 per unit, that's $4,500. In the first year you do four of those, okay? That's 18,000, right? But then you need to have more like 15, $20,000 to be able to do something like that, okay? So it all depends on your target. It depends on your goal. It depends on your budget and your, not budget, wrong word, your available uh, uh, capital. There's no shortage of capital. Um, if you live in the US, you can apply for a PayPal credit. Uh, we also have a resource for you guys inside of, uh, um, inside of the, 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 what do you call it? Inside of the, uh, the, the dashboard that <clears throat> offers you uh, capital. If you are outside of the US, you know, you launch one product like this, right? And that's the thing that I always talk about. <clears throat> you launch a product like this, you run it for a couple of months, you build a PNL, and then you take it to investors and say, look, I have a business that's worth X. You simply extrapolate. Let's say it's been three months, your, your business is making whatever, $5,000 a month in revenue, let's say that's $1,500 in profit. You extrapolate that over a year, and then you go 3X, 5X, 10X, whatever you think your business is valued at. And then you go to an investor, which is your mom, uncle, whatever, right? Uh, the friend's dad, your girlfriend's dad, or you know, boyfriend's mom, or whomever, and say, hey, I've got a business that does X. I'm looking for uh, investors. Early on investors obviously are gonna get the, the, the bigger chunk uh, and the, it's valued at X. How much equity do you want? You take that money, you're not gonna put it in your pocket and go out partying, but you're gonna invest it in more products and then launch more products and expand your business. So it's possible guys, very doable, very easy to do as well. All right, so let's take some questions about this before. I know Bernard, um, I know you um, have a question for me and thank you for joining. And I have one too. Yes, is it about what I did right now? No. Okay, give me one second then I'll get to it. Um, let me just answer questions because I want to cover the segment in the course. So I want to answer questions about what I just did. Do you, does anyone have any questions about what we just did? Yeah, uh, this is Marion. Yes, I do. I have a question. Should um, How do we differentiate this product from other countertop wine racks? Okay, good. very good question. And thank you for that. So let me share my screen. Okay, so... Now what you need to do is now, okay, so everything looks good right now. How do I differentiate? Very good question. I appreciate that. Now what you need to do is, first of all, you need to go through and see what's available in the market and what's the potential availability. That's number one. Number two, you want to look at all the negative feedback and negative reviews of the current existing customer uh, sellers. Okay. Um, and I would start even with the top sellers because that's where more people have bought, there's probably more negative feedback and you can have, you have more data to use in your advantage, okay? Don't get discouraged just because your top seller is doing great. That's awesome, good for them. But there's also room for you to, to, to grow as well and do good. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna simply scroll down and then go to, my computer works a little bit faster. You want to go to their reviews. One star. You start from the one star and then build your way up. And then you simply start reading what customers are talking about. So this one says, I was looking for a wine rack that fits a specific space while still holding as many bottles as possible. So I settled for this one, arrived broken. The front piece rang were severely. Okay, so this is um, this is due to, you know, what's broken, right? So if you're gonna do something like that, you want to make sure it doesn't arrive broken, but that doesn't really give you much. Doesn't actually fit wine bottles. Okay, well that, okay, you need to make sure that it fits wine bottles. Um, so, so that's an easy fix, I hope. Uh, not worth it, I was looking for a wine. Okay, so that's the same one. Okay, so now we need to go to, okay, so this is just that. Okay, well, I mean, the product is pretty good because it sounds like these two are just whiny little people. 
but it sounds like, you know, everyone else likes it. So that's good. Awesome. Okay. So now you go to the next product and then you just do the same thing, right? You keep going down the list, going to, and, and maybe like make you like columns, right? Okay. So one column talks about, okay, so it doesn't fit one bottle. So I need to make sure that is that it's broken. Okay. So this column is how many people said it was broken. Okay. I need to make sure that maybe my packaging needs to be better. Okay. Because maybe they're just putting that inside of a box, shipping it out. So now maybe you need to make sure that your product is, um, is simply, uh, uh, what do you call it? Is simply wrapped in like foam or whatever else, like bubble wrap, so that way it doesn't break. Okay. Um, I don't know if you, it's metal, so you're probably not going to be able to collapse it. It's going to have to be shipped just as is. So I'm assuming that shoved in a box. Um, you know, and you start looking at other things. Do I want to go something like this big? You know, I'm assuming this also breaks, right? So like this is probably like a piece or two. This is probably a piece or two. You know. Um, this could also break. So this looks like it's three pieces. So this is one, this is two, this is three. And then maybe even the, the to answer uh, Hershey's question also from earlier, um, usually these things are collapsible. So like these pieces of wood stack on top of each other. And then these are just six panels that stack on top of each other. And then the product will probably be about this big, right? Um, and then, but you just simply start going through all the feedback and like you've got, you know, you've got guys that are doing, you know, thousand, 500 reviews. So there is some, um, there is some negative feedback in there. I'm pretty sure. Right. And you start looking at all these different designs, like almost everyone is doing something different. Maybe you just start researching on Google and then start getting ideas. Another, uh, another great place to get inspiration is, uh, and what is that website? Etsy, especially for things like that. There's a lot of people that do crafty stuff. So you can go to Etsy maybe and start looking at, um, you know, what are ways to like, what are people doing there? You know, you do something crafty. You also can uh, reach out to your manufacturer and say, Hey, you know, how can I differentiate here? You know, what do you got some new designs? You know, like this cool stuff. It's not real nice. I might actually buy me one. So almost everyone that I'm seeing has different, like, I don't think I've seen this hexagon one. There's multiple people that are selling this. I'd probably not sell that. Uh, but it is the top seller. So that's another thing you have to think about is yes, differentiation, but who's selling the most and why? Is it because they're more seasoned because they've been in the, in the market for longer? Or is it because their design is more desirable? You also want to look at the number of bottles that you can fit. So this is five, this is six, this is six, this is eight, right? And then you want to look at, okay, what's most that's selling? What's the number of bottles that's most selling? So there was a, there's three, three, five. Okay, so there's eight there. There is five here. There are six here. There's three here, right? So that's another thing they want to look at is, okay, what is the most that's selling? So these guys are top sellers, okay? So you've got the hexagon metal. You've got these guys. You know, maybe you do something like that. Maybe you go the big, you know, route, you know? But then this is not going to fit. Like this won't fit my countertops because we have counters on top of our countertop, obviously, right? Assuming that this is probably, you know, and then you got to look at dimensions. I don't know what the dimensions are. Um, so this would be more like something I would buy, okay? Um, unless if like you have a bar and you just want to put this on top of the bar, you know? So that's another thing they want to look at. Um, and then the other cool thing is that Amazon has this feature called um, frequently bought together. And then what you do is you simply go inside of the listing and then usually it's here somewhere. Or see, there's this. Well, no, this is probably gonna be the same one, same products. So this is also gonna give you inspiration, but there is a, I'm not showing up here. I showed up earlier. So right under the pictures, usually there is a tab that says frequently bought together. So people who bought this also bought this, right? Just be careful because sometimes it'll give you some products that have got nothing to do with the main product, but oftentimes you can get pretty good um, inspiration. So what is that? Is that glasses? You don't want to sell glasses. Premium one, yeah. You don't want to sell glasses. I mean, it makes sense, but you don't want to sell glasses. Breakable, I don't like breakable stuff. Um, 
Maybe you could include a couple um, wine, what is that, cork thing? You know, the metal thing, the metal cork thing. Maybe you could include a, maybe a, a, a wine opener, like a kit, you know, like that and like a small gift thing, right? Like a few corks. And then um, let's say if you're gonna do like a three, a three rack, I would do like two corks and a wine opener. You know, that's a free gift that you're giving that I don't see anyone else doing, you know? Um, Okay, so this guy's, no, I don't think he's offering it. I think it's just picture, yeah. Or there's a wine opener, I don't know if that means he includes it, okay? But I don't see, oh, there you go. So I see these guys are giving those, I don't know what they're called, stops or corks or whatever, right? So maybe you do something like that. Let's see if there is uh, something useful and they're frequently bought together. So not related to this product because this is usually the exact same product. And then you just simply keep going down the list and then see, once again, Google the stuff, go on Etsy, these are good websites, go on Instagram, see if there are any wine enthusiasts, you know, and what they're selling, what they're offering. Um, Any questions, guys? Unmute yourself, please, and ask your questions. Just about this, let's let's make sure that all of the questions about what we're doing here is covered. See, there's this, whatever this is. Anyone? Going once, going twice. Um, I I have a I have a question. Is it in regards to this? Thing yeah. that we're doing or not? Okay. Yes, yes. I, I wouldn't know if you maybe talked about it when I was not here, but I, I want to ask with regards to to items that um like when you were talking about when on the website it shows you like items that are, are frequently bought together. So is it possible that when you're like doing a listing, uh, apart from the rack, for example, then you add another item to it? So you're like selling two or three items together. So it could maybe attract the, the buyer. I don't know if you understand, just like um, a bundle, for example. Yeah, absolutely, man. So that's that's the whole point of differentiating, right? Is trying to either create a bundle or just a standalone item that is different. So in this, in this, uh, mm -hmm. in this, in this scenario, you could do mm -hmm. both. You could either create a, a new design, which looks like there's a million designs, either creating a complete new design that's that's not available as a differentiator or adding a second or a third item that is kind of like a like a gift or something that differentiates you from the other listing other okay okay, okay. that's my question thanks any other questions associated to this one second 